Today, we're pulling out the playbook, step-by-step -step strategies to recover from a volatile market. Next, on Retiring Today. This is Retiring Today. I'm here with Lauren Merkel and Sean Honkamp. They're both certified financial planners and certified financial fiduciaries. Sean is also a CPA. You know what else they are? They're old high school athletes. Not old. Wait, you're not old, guys. <laughs> yeah, I met a are, few but... years ago, just a few years ago, you were high school stars. Two decades ago. Two decades ago. a long ago. time ago. Yeah. Old, old is good. We'll go with <laughs> old, old is good. Yeah, because, yeah. hey, Here's the nice thing about these sports stories. When we tell them, we can tell them however we want. That's right. So I was a star in my mind, and you guys were stars in my mind as well. Superstar. Superstars. Uh, I know both of you know that both of you played a lot of sports growing up in high school, and you played in college as well. So today, a lot of people like sports, right? Whether you play them, whether you like to watch them, you understand the concept of a play. You understand that you draw up a play, you execute a play, and if the play goes well, you score a touchdown, you get a hoop, whatever the sport is that you like. So today, we want to talk about a playbook, Lauren, that you can pull out when the markets are doing some of this crazy stuff we've seen recently. And this playbook is really crucial because the markets get crazy all the time. If we just think back over the last 25 years, and you've probably been invested for at least 25 years, how many market crazy time frames have you lived through? I mean, we can just list a couple here. 2022 was kind of crazy. 2020 was definitely a wild ride. And then we have 2008, 2001, and two. I mean, we can keep going back we go through market turmoil all the time. That has historically what has happened to the market and that's not gonna change going forward. On average, we go through bear markets every couple of years, recessions every five to six years. So if we are lucky, you are gonna see at least four to five different recessions over the course of- Did you say lucky? lucky? To see a recession? Yes. <laughs> okay, and then, I, I was like, what? I'm glad you stopped me there because that's how I look at it. I look at market volatility equals opportunity. I like it. We are okay. going to see these recessions and market volatility, whether we like it or not. So let's reposition our mind to say that's opportunity if we're prepared for it, and we will be because we have the playbook. Let's also take advantage of it. And then that way, when we come out of this market volatility, we will be in a better position than when we went into it. And that's kind of what we want to discuss today. I have a feeling you have a play for that, that, <laughs> got, that, we, that opportunity. We got a good we got a couple. We'll write up yeah. a play. Because in 2022, Sean, you, you, I mean, what happened with some of these indices is a real clear indicator that people were starting to say, hey, is this a recession? Are we in a recession? How long will it last? How will it impact me? We definitely saw that volatility that you talked about in 2022. The year started at its high, you know, 20, 2001 ended, 2021 ended at a high, <laughs> and then steadily throughout the year, we saw that steady increase throughout the year. And the thing to think about with that volatility that, that you, all of you saw in that year, there wasn't necessarily a specific event like some of these past years and past time frames where, you know, the, the great, the recession with the housing bubble and you think about, you know, 9-11 and just different events. Last year was more just an overall kind of feel that really throughout the year brought those markets down. And if you thought about them or measured them, some of those indices that you talked about, the S&P 500 is a very broad indice. It was down around 20% last year. The NASDAQ index, that was down around 34%. So definitely one of those wild swings, one of those highly volatile market timeframes. And you're right, we go through a year like 2022 where it, there wasn't an event like 2020 with COVID or 2008 with the real estate meltdown. Mm -hmm. And so that's, in some ways, that's even worse because people are just kind of left with this this thought of, well, the market might come back and we have a really good day. Okay, are we started starting to see the market come back and then we have a really bad day? So years like 2022 can be even worse for investors because they don't know exactly what's going to happen in the next day, next week, next month, or certainly over the next 12 months. Let's talk a very, about a very specific category investor, though. We know that when you're in the accumulation years, 20s, 30s, 40s, some of the stuff, you can kind of let it blow by. If you're thinking about retiring in the next couple of years and you see what's happening with the stock market, you see this kind of volatility, it can be really scary. When you're 40 years old, it's easier to feel like volatility is an opportunity because you're probably putting every pay period into your 401k plan. And so when the market goes down, you're buying shares at a lower price and you're buying more shares. So it's easier to see the opportunity, the silver lining in market volatility. 
But when you are a year away from needing to live on this life savings that you've created and the market goes down by 34% like it did in 2022, you're sitting there thinking, can I still do it? Because your, your portfolio might have been down 30%. And you're already worried about what do I have enough? And then you see that go down and you're like, I don't know how this is ever gonna work. Not only when the market recovers, but you know inherently you're gonna go through more market, market downturn. So how do you protect? How do you protect and make sure you have confidence you're not gonna run out of money before you run out of time in such crazy market timeframes? Okay, you heard him say lucky. You heard him say yes. lucky in recession in the same sense. So it's time to get back to the sports analogies because the recession is coming or the volatility is coming and you need to draw up a play to turn this into a, a real opportunity. Yeah, and this play is called develop a plan, play, develop a plan, and then stay committed. Remember this, market volatility equals opportunity. Okay. This is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the volatility equals opportunity. Let's say that you have $100,000 that you're gonna invest, and this is gonna be an easy, easy investment strategy. This takes absolutely no work. The work is actually just to stay invested. 2007, you invest $100,000. Between 2007 to 2022, you're investing at 100% in the S&P 500, which by the way is not a great diversified portfolio, so it's not like we would recommend it, but for eases of this conversation, $100,000 S&P 500, 2007 to 2022, you do absolutely nothing but allow that money to stay invested, it's gonna to equate to over $450,000 of a portfolio. Not too bad. Unfortunately, this result happens for very few people because between 2007 and 2022, we went through 2008, the Great Recession, we also had some hiccups in 2018, the market did, and then also 2020 and also 2022. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard pundits. So you turn on the TV and the experts on TV are saying, I'm going to cash. You're crazy if you don't go to cash. I'm going to cash because this market's gonna continue to blow up. There's no hope in the market. Let's get out and preserve. You've heard that time and time and time again over this 15 year time frame. And some of you have taken the leap to cash or did take the leap to cash and you're sitting there wondering, when do you get back in? The problem is with trying to time the market is if over this 15 year time horizon, you missed just the top 10 days in the market. You no longer had a total portfolio of over 450,000. You only had a portfolio of over 200,000. Cuts that gain in, in more than half. It, what if you missed the best 20 days in the market? Now it's only 126, but look over here. If you missed the best 30 days and best 40 days, you've actually now lost money in the market. If we count the, the number of days over this 15, 15 year time horizon that the stock market was open, it's somewhere around 3,700. 3,700 days the market was open. If you just miss the top 30 or 40, you actually lost money. Now. The thing about the best days in the market is typically we see the best days in the market happen shortly after some of the worst days and certainly some of the best days in the market happen during some of the worst time frames in the market. All we have to do over the same time frame, if we want to identify when these top 10 best days in the market took place, you can see them right here, October 13, 2008, one day, the S&P 500 was up over 11%. Now, you remember what was happening in October of 2008. Very few people wanted to be invested in the market. And if you went to the sideline, you missed out on 11% S&P 500 gain in that day. You can see the other days, uh, 2008, 2020, 2009. If we fast forward to the next five best days in the market, also 20, 2008, and 2009. And this is a theme that we see throughout. The best days in the market typically happen in some of the worst time frames in the market where people have the most anxiety and the most fear of what the market's gonna do because it's a wild ride day over day and it's easy, it's tempting to go to the sidelines, especially when you turn on the TV and the experts are telling you, let's get out, let's go to cash. And, and staying in the market during these highly volatile times requires that strategy. It's that playbook that we're going to talk so much today. You want to feel confident 
that your overall design, your portfolio, your investment decisions, that you're making the right decisions already and that you know that you can sustain this high volatility that in the long term, we always feel good, the markets have always been positive in the long term. So having that strategy, having that playbook is gonna give you that confidence you need to be able to maybe not look at the markets on a given day and, hopefully, and know, hope, hope for and know that we're gonna have these very positive days soon after. And that's what we saw. I mean, the good news there is the best strategy took the least amount of effort. Basically, put your money into the market in 2007. Don't look at it, look at it, but just don't react. And eventually, you're going to wake up 15 years later, and it, it did really well. When you react and you make moves, probably moves you otherwise shouldn't make, that's when it really evaporates that performance that you otherwise could have. Okay guys, I'm renaming the play. Play number one, remain in place during the worst days of chaos. We've got two more offensive plays to talk about when it comes to market volatility in just a moment. But first, we've got some questions about what Lauren just said. How does this really apply to you? That's that's a portfolio. Those are some numbers that, that may or may not resonate with you. You've got your own retirement vision and your own retirement portfolio. Well, you can talk directly to a retirement planner by scheduling a 15-minute retirement checkup call. You can go to MerkelRetire.com right now. Schedule a time and a date that works for you and ask questions about this or any of the aspects of retirement. More play-by-play -play strategies for market volatility next. Retirement is all about staying active and spending time with loved ones. But you may still wonder if you can have the retirement you've dreamed of. Download our complimentary Retire Your Way toolkit to receive a copy of Lauren Merkel's new book, Retire Your Way, and five guides that'll help you turn your retirement worries into confidence. Go to retireyourwaytoolkit.com. Don't just dream about retirement, take action and retire your way. This is Retiring Today. I'm here with Sean Honkamp and Lauren Merkel, and we're talking about plays you can run when there's market volatility. So it kind of helps people take control. Like when, when the game is on the line, you get to write up a play. So let's say you're the coach here, Coach Honkamp. You've got, you've got another offensive play. We're going to title this one, Volatility Equals Opportunity. You heard him say that a little bit in the first segment. He really, he really likes us. So it's very what catchy. Is, very catchy. Very catchy. What does the play look like? Yeah, when volatility equals opportunity, we know that we're always going to have money in the market, and we know we're going to be subject to volatility when we are invested. So when we, when you do experience that volatility, there are different opportunities that can present themselves as part of the overall plan that you have for retirement. One of those comes to mind is that you can take that opportunity to increase or potentially decrease your overall risk. Volatility works both directions. I mean, volatility itself, people tend to think we're going down, right? But we know volatility is both high and up and down. So when you have the volatility and, and we have a down market, we know how to make money in the markets is buy low, sell high. So when the markets are down, depending on the overall design of your total portfolio, you may have opportunities to buy more and take more risk. And now that you, if you've taken less risk when the markets go down, if you increase that risk, like we've mentioned before, we believe in the markets, they're all, they've always been positive. And then if you have higher, if you're taking more risk when the markets rebound, you should participate more in that. And now you've created a more efficient portfolio. Another opportunity that's out there is Roth conversions. So Roth conversions, while they're part of that tax plan, they very much are part of this overall investment plan that includes this market volatility. And if a Roth conversion makes sense for your tax plan and overall plan in a given year, the best time of the entire year to do that conversion is at the market bottom for the year. We know that's easy to find. Right? We, <laughs> I'm just always, say we always know easy. when the market low right. is going to be. So we're not <laughs> trying to time the market, but if we do have a down period, that can be a great time to take advantage of that Roth conversion and be that much more tax efficient. There's a tax loss, harv tax loss harvesting opportunity that also can come up in this market volatility. And typically we're focusing on non-qualified funds, you know, money that's not in your IRAs at that time. And when we have this market volatility, some of those investments might lose some of their value, it might give you an opportunity to redesign, you know, sell at maybe a more efficient time. Yeah, 2020 uh, comes to mind as one of those times that was a really good opportunity to take advantage of one of those plays, the Roth conversions specifically. And I remember in 2020, we, uh, we were sending emails, uh, we were on the phone, we were trying to get a hold of as many people as we possibly could, and, and we said, this is go time. 
this is go time. We, we know that you want to do a Roth conversion. It makes sense within your overall plan to do a Roth conversion. What an excellent opportunity when the market was down 30, 34% in 22 days in March of 2020. That's an excellent opportunity to take pre-tax money, shift it over to the Roth, and then have that money grow tax-free. And people did really well the rest of that year then on the Roth side of it because when the market comes back up, if you left it in the pre-tax, you're going to get the growth, but you'd rather have the growth over here in the Roth tax-free. And if you can time it, but that's really a challenge for a lot of people to do because when we go through really poor times in the market like that, people tend to become fearful. There's a lot of anxiety, and then there's a lot of people who just freeze in that moment. But that's part of the benefit of having that plan in place because it gives you these action steps. So then it's just executing the plan when all these other crazy things do happen. What I like about the plays we're talking about today is these are actually things that you build into portfolios. You did a good job of explaining some of it right there. But even that first uh, example up at the board is when you ha you're working with somebody who's been doing this for 20 plus years, they can say, yes, this is part of the histor history of the market. Hang on you know, to, to the people that we work with. If, let's talk about what staying in right now looks like and don't let people make those emotional decisions. It very much is an educational process for us, which does help when we go through these times. I mean, in 2020, uh, one of the biggest questions that I got from uh, circles, not necessarily from families that we work with, but other people outside, they said, I bet your phone is ringing off the hook because everybody's wanting to do something. with." And that wasn't the case at all. If anything, we our phone was busy because we were calling them and saying, hey, this is go time. We were waiting for this type of market movement. Now it's here. Let's implement some of these plays. And there was a lot less anxiety with the families that we serve because when we talk to them about building portfolios, one is most of them have what we call a recession resistant portfolio. So if the market's down 30, they're not down 30. Mm -hmm. And it gives them an opportunity to then take advantage of some of these plays in a little bit better way with less anxiety. But then yes, we're also there and saying, okay, this is a part of the natural process of the market. We were ready for this. Now let's implement the plays that we had had planned. And that's why it's so important to, at any point in time that we're making investment decisions and designing a portfolio, to be very intentional about the decisions we're making at that time. You know, when we first start working with the families we work with, that's an opportunity to evaluate that overall portfolio, maybe make some new decisions. And at any point in time, we don't know if we're at a market low or a market high or where, where, where we are at in between there. So we've got to make those decisions preparing for this volatility to happen so that way you do feel confident and that way you do have these opportunities within your overall portfolio when we do experience this market volatility. Lauren, you said recession resistant portfolio, which is a hard one for me to say. But when you said that, I know there are people at home going, hey, I like the idea of that. I want one of, I those. Want one of those. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? And I think a really great way to see what this looks like is the online journey to retirement workshop. Yeah, we in the online journey to retirement workshop, we have a hypothetical couple, John and Sue. They're trying to retire within three short years. They have very specific goals. One of those goals is they don't want the high flying ride in the market like what they've experienced for the last 15 to 20 years. They want a dependable portfolio that can beat taxation, it can beat inflation and it can grow a little bit on top of that and it can accomplish what their retirement goals are. That's what they're striving for, which also is recession resistant. So we go through the type of portfolio they had pre-retirement, the type of portfolio they're, they're trying to construct to get the investment experience they want post-retirement. We take you through those steps, we take you through the outcome, and then it gives you some some ideas of things that you can consider in your portfolio construction as you're looking to make this transition from the working to the retirement world. You can see how John and Sue build a recession resistant portfolio by going to the website that's on your screen right now. It's retirewithmerkel.com. There you'll choose a time and a date that works for you. Then sit back and relax and take in a lot of great retirement information. But we're not done. We've got one more play, how to be on the offense when it comes to market volatility next. Retirement is all about staying active and spending time with loved ones. But you may still wonder if you can have the retirement you've dreamed of. Download our complimentary Retire Your Way toolkit to receive a copy of Lauren Merkel's new book, Retire Your Way and five guides that'll help you turn your retirement worries into confidence. Go to retireyourwaytoolkit.com. Don't just dream about retirement, take action and retire your way.
This is Retiring Today. I'm here with Lauren Merkel and Sean Honkamp, and we've got more plays, or actually just one more play, and this is offensive play number three, control what you can control. But first, before you control what you can control, let's talk about what you can't control. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a whole list of things we can't control. Oh yeah, let's stay, let's stay with retirement Oh, you mean the market type yeah, stuff? Yeah, well, yeah. we can't control how long recessions last. We can't really control when the market goes down, when the market goes up. Uh, we can't control any of that, but to a large degree, we can control how your portfolio reacts to all of these uncontrollables. And that's why early on in, this, in the show, we said market volatility equals opportunity because you can control your plan. You can control the specific plays that you put into your plan so when these uncontrollables happen, they don't have to derail your plan. They can actually enhance it. And, and a big part of that, something I really enjoy talking to the, our families about, is diversification. The, the word diversification, that's not new to you, but as you get into this pre-retirement stage of life, it can feel and mean something different. We're used to the diversification of large cap, small cap, some international, you know, different categories, different sectors. But as you get into this pre-retirement stage of life, diversification means a little different is that you still wanna have some of those at-risk strategies, but now might be the right time for some of these alternative strategies, different strategies. And now as you have different strategies within your overall portfolio, that sets your overall plan up to have these opportunities with this market volatility, which as you mentioned, one of the big things that we can't control. So I have to imagine for some of the people watching that maybe don't have a plan, the concept that the families and individuals we work with are well-versed and they're well-versed in the fact that if they turn on the news and see that the S&P is down 25%, they kind of know exactly what's gonna happen with their portfolio. If you don't have a plan, you might be wondering, well, how do they do that? How does this work? Yeah, and that's one of the pieces of feedback we get is the market's down, and a lot of the families that we serve, they'll come to us and be like, I'm, I'm not even paying attention anymore because I, I know that what I'm, what I'm seeing in my portfolio is not taking place, is not what I'm seeing on the news. How, how that all works is, going back to what Sean said earlier, you have to be really intentional. When you're 40, you can just put money away, let it invest how it invests, markets do whatever they do, and eventually you're gonna retire. When you're retired and dependent upon income, you have to be very intentional with every single aspect, how you invest your money, what kind of risk you're taking, do, what kind of plays you do put into it, what kind of income are you taking out, when are you taking the income out, uh, what, what kind of tax bills are you paying, what kind of tax plan do you have incorporated within the overall retirement plan. All of these things have to be intentional and work together. It's like a, putting a puzzle together, right? You, you start with the border, well, at least I do, most start people, start with the fair. border yeah, and common. then you fill it fill it in but eventually you have a really good visual of what that picture of the puzzle is putting your retirement plan together is very similar it feels messy a lot of people don't know where to start there's a lot of moving parts but as you start to put the plan together the the puzzle together you will see what your retirement plan looks like and be, become much more clear which does decrease that anxiety and as that puzzle comes together the word i think about is that transparency you mentioned the intention right as we work with our families be very intentional about helping you build that portfolio it's that transparency as well let's know exactly what you own let's know what you know exactly what your cost is let's understand how those different vehicles and strategies are going to perform in a given market cycle so that they have a different purpose and again, having more of that information, being more intentional, having more transparency, that gives you that confidence that you're seeking so that as Lauren said, you don't need to worry about what's going on in the TV because you feel that much more confident about your overall portfolio and we know that we're not taking as much risk. So when is it time to start thinking about this differently? Because you talk a lot about the accumulation years and then you go into the other years. So when should people start thinking about taking a better look at their risk and, and, and their investments. We, we're I like, we're, I like, we're talking about plays, oh, so yeah, why don't go, we talk yeah. about the red zone? Okay. We talk all the time about this Football, red zone of yeah. retirement, so it's a perfect fit here. So if you're within 10 years of retirement, to us that's what we call that red zone. That's the right time to start thinking more about this. This market volatility is gonna mean a little more. It might create a little more uncertainty and even fear as you get closer to this retirement. So if you're within 10 years of retirement or any time beyond, that's the perfect time to learn more about what it means to have an overall comprehensive retirement plan. Another great place to start is, I think the online journey to retirement workshop will give you a really clear picture of what the, the puzzle pieces are and maybe even kind of start putting them together. Yeah, we, we show you what the different components of a retirement plan could look like for you and then different ways to put them together. And what I really like about the online journey to retirement workshop, one is it doesn't cost you anything. Two is you can view this from the comfort of your own home. We do answer questions on, on the workshop. 
but you'll get some action steps that you can take out of that workshop to implement almost immediately to help enhance what you're trying to do from an overall retirement planning standpoint. Have you, have, have you guys ever heard the saying, when it rains gold, put out a bucket, not a thimble? <laughs> when it rains gold, put out a bucket. A bucket, I like it. You can it. capture way more of the gold if you just have a thimble, it's capturing just a little bit. I'd rather get more gold. When it rains gold, you can't control that. It's just raining gold. What you can control is you can get the bucket or the thimble. And having the plan is getting the bucket instead of the thimble. And the online journey to retirement workshop shows you what your bucket could look like, how big your bucket could be, because there is a lot of opportunities that take place that we can't control. It may not rain gold. I but thought he gonna, said he could make it rain gold. That's but what it, I but heard. It's, yeah. it's going to feel like gold when you have your plan put together and you see the roadmap of how you're going to accomplish your retirement vision. Yeah, you won't be as nervous. You won't be as worried. You, you've seen it. You guys, you've delivered plans to people, Sean, and you've seen the anxiety, the, the concern just kind of wash off their faces. That's a wonderful part of what we have the opportunity to do is we help people prepare for this final stage of life. And we've never had a family sit in front of us and say, I want to retire twice. So the goal is to retire once, help you get it right, give you all the information you need so that you can feel very confident as you're making these various decisions are answering these various questions that you're going to be facing in this retirement stage of life. And put out that bucket. Bucket, big bucket. <laughs> the big bucket. So how do you get started? Here's a great place. The online journey to retirement workshop. The website is on your screen. It's retirewithmerkle.com. You can sign up there for a time and a date that works for you. Sit back and start on your way to your journey to retirement. We'll keep talking about all of the aspects of retirement on this show. It's retiring today and we thank you for watching. Do I have enough saved for retirement? When should I take Social Security? Which Medicare option is best? How do I plan for inflation? Sometimes the road to retirement starts with more questions than answers. We're here to help. Join us for our upcoming Journey to Retirement workshop. Get answers and start your retirement journey with confidence. Our online workshop includes information on Secure Act 2.0 and changing retirement rules. Visit retirewithmerkle.com to register for an upcoming workshop. Your retirement journey starts now. Thank you.